live on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and BlastTheRadio.com, this is The Lowell Green Show. The number to call and be heard around the world is 613-413-2217. Or email Lowell at BlastTheRadio.com. And now, here is Lowell Green. Thank you. Well, apparently, it's not just the West that the Trudeau government doesn't like. Uh, From what happened today, it would appear that uh, Trudeau and company is not too crazy about the East either. Let me just give you a little bit of background here, okay? Uh, Very recently, the four Atlantic premiers sent a letter to Trudeau and company asking that the federal carbon tax, which is set to be imposed this Friday, be postponed because of the hardship that it would cost Maritimers. We're already suffering here, say the premiers. Adding a federal carbon tax will cost us here in the Atlantic provinces another 14.4 cents per liter for gasoline. Yeah, Um, please, say the premiers, let us have a meeting to see if we can't resolve this and at least postpone this We just cannot afford this on the East Coast. But the Maritimer pleas have fallen on deaf ears. Oh, no. Oh, no. Lowering emissions is far too important to worry about starving people, particularly those Maritimers. Stephen Gilbo, Environment Minister and the second most dangerous man in Canada, second only to Trudeau, has given the Atlantic provinces the old middle finger. In other words, F you. Um, Stephen Gilbo says, you either submit a provincial carbon tax plan by this Friday, or Mr. Man, up goes the tax this Friday, 14.4 cents per liter, this Friday in the Atlantic provinces. Now, the Atlantic premiers claim that they have already submitted a carbon tax plan that should be acceptable and can be afforded by local residents. But Gilbo and Trudeau, they don't give a damn about affordability. What do they know about affordability, right? So this Friday, up goes the cost of gasoline throughout the maritime provinces, goes up by 14.4 cents a liter. And, John, you're saying that gasoline was already very expensive in the Atlantic provinces. So in Ontario, Premier Ford knocked his portion or the Ontario portion off of gas here. So when I was down in New Brunswick just a few weeks ago, it was about a buck 62 here in Ottawa. In the Maritimes, it was a buck 96. Wow. So it'll be that's well over two dollars. And we're looking at about a buck 56 here now. That's Um, I don't know how people are going to do that. No way. Well, the premiers say we can't, but Gilbo says, well, they're right. You, you know, just the old middle finger. Um, but you know, there's, there's another consideration here that really, really grinds me. Okay. I want you to remember, ladies and gentlemen, that all of those people in the Maritimes cannot, cannot buy Canadian oil or gas. The same holds true for about half of Quebec. We all know the story. Trudeau and company canceled Energy East Pipeline, which would have brought Alberta, Saskatchewan, oil and gas, to Quebec and the Maritime Provinces. But Trudeau turned it down. So as a consequence, every single gas pump in the all four Atlantic provinces and in all uh, about half of Quebec, all the east or the uh, west, uh, yeah, the eastern portion of Quebec, you can't buy Canadian oil or gas. So think of this. Just think of Canadian women. I mean, women buy gasoline as well. So some of the money that they pay for gasoline goes to Saudi Arabia, goes to fatten the already vastly, grossly inflated pockets of oil sheiks in Saudi Arabia, sheiks who whip women if they show too much ankle, will jail women if they step outside their home without being accompanied by a male. Saudi Arabia 
which is now being supported by Canadian women in the Maritime Provinces, please remember, has jailed a young mother, Saudi Arabian mother, 34 years in a Saudi jail for twittering support for women's rights. 34 years in jail, the Saudi Arabian government, which we must buy oil from, thanks to Trudeau, the great feminist, and Stephen Gilbo. I, I just point that out. Not, not only, so what a, what a double penalty, okay? Not only is the price of oil and gas going up in the Maritimes, 14.4 cents a liter of gas, but a good chunk of the money, not the tax, the tax will come to Trudeau, but a good chunk of the money that they pay for gas goes to Saudi Arabia to help fund a government that whips women. I just have to point that out, folks. This is the great feminist prime minister that a good many of you have voted for and still support. Latest polls indicate more than 35% still think Trudeau is the cat's pajamas. And that includes a lot of women, by the way, too. It just drives me cra- it drives me crazy when you stop. That, that, that aspect alone, okay? Canadians in the maritime provinces cannot buy Canadian oil. <laughs> Unbelievable. And by the way, I have to laugh in, in somewhat the same vein. I, I have to laugh, although it's not really funny. The Quebec premier has just promised that if re-elected, which he likely will be as premier, he will lower Quebec taxes, the biggest tax cut Quebec has ever seen. Well, I mean, he'll get another $9 billion in equalization payments, a good chunk of it from Alberta. He will not buy Alberta oil, but he'll take Alberta money, the son of a biscuit box. That's, I mean, that, uh, John, the hypocrisy involved in this is just astonishing. Just astonishing. Anybody have any uh, any comments on that? Please let me know. And, you know, I was just thinking. Uh, <laughs> contrast guys like Trudeau and Gilbo, who don't give a damn for you, with uh, Pierre Polyev out there pounding away. You know, he's he's been across this country a couple of times now, speaking to very large crowds, as you know. His latest proposal, he says, if elected prime minister, One of the first things he's going to do is going to pass what he calls plain speech legislation, similar to what's in the United States and very similar to what is now in New Zealand. In other words, all new, he he won't apply this to all present documents. The cost of redoing it would be astronomical. But any new government documents, et cetera, et cetera, must be written in clear, concise language that ordinary people would understand. No gobbledygook from Pierre. Polyev. That's I just point that out as a contrast. Okay. Um, by the way, those of you who do not think that the city really will elect will erect 710 windmills, let me just point something out. I'm not going to dwell on this. We've dwelt on this a lot, but um, the city has already begun rezoning areas to allow for the erection of windmills, giant turbines. And I got thinking, John, you know, if we're going to erect 710 wind curb turbines in Ottawa, where would be some very good places, some appropriate locations? Oh, okay. Um, Lansdowne huh. Park. Uh, I would think there's <laughs> room for <laughs> half a dozen to be enjoyed by the residents of the Glebe. Uh, where, where where it lands down would you put six turbines? Oh, I don't know. In the middle of the field there. There's, there's uh, you know. In the middle of the field. <laughs> okay. yeah, put them wherever the hell. All right. Okay. All right. Um, there's all kinds of room. You ever see the lawn on Parliament Hill? We're not hardly allowed any up there. I, I would think that uh, <laughs> we could put at least four on the lawn of Parliament Hill. And, I was and, they, thinking, and they would power the bouncy castles. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I'm thinking Yay! You know, they've closed Wellington Street. So we could line Wellington Street with giant wind turbines. And, uh, and if you've got any other idea, oh, I, that's all you know what? You ever, you ever been in Rockcliffe? All kinds of all kinds of room up there. There's parks and gardens and everything. 
I, I, I would imagine we could locate 15 or 20 in Rockcliffe. I, I, the Rockcliffe, you know, Rockcliffe fights are all very environmental inspired. They would welcome this. <laughs> We're getting great suggestions. They, by would, the way, say, they, would, say, they would say, you know, wonderful, wonderful. Put one in my backyard. I got room out here right next to the pool. We can put a big wind turbine here. Uh, I'll move the uh, the little patio here a bit, a little bit. We have, yeah, we got room for maybe one or two out there. I can sure. Rockcliffe fights. Um, solar panel, 36 square kilometer. That's a lot of land. And uh, we need that. We need all of the farmland we've got, but we're not using the central experimental farm anymore. Nothing of any value has been done there for years. Um, how many acres? How many acres are in the uh, experimental farm? Do you know, John? Uh, I knew that a little time ago. Well, hang on a second here. Anyway, I'll, there's a lot of space there. I would say you you said that uh, 36 square kilometers is about four times the size of the experimental farm. Experimental farm is 1,055 acres, or if you prefer, 427 hectares. Well, you know, you could put a lot of a lot of solar panels there. Oh, yeah. And not only that, it would reduce the cost. I mean, don't forget, every solar panel has got to be hooked into the electrical grid with copper wire. Um, so it would be, with because the solar panels would be right downtown Ottawa, uh, it, it seems to me that it would be very appropriate. Let's just cover the central experimental farm with solar panels. Be much cheaper to do that because of the closeness, et cetera, et cetera. If you've got any better ideas on any of this, please let me know. Seven hundred and ten giant wind turbines. We can't we we can't put them all just in rural areas, you know. Um, there, there there's got to be some. I mean, with that many, there's there's got to be some in downtown Ottawa. Oh yeah, you got to share the love. Of course, but you got to share it. You you can't just impose this all on on rural communities. Right. You know, um, I mean, we're not going to, the rural communities already are being told you can't use as much fertilizer, you know, you can't grow as, well, maybe that's the idea. You can't grow about one third of the crops that you were growing before. So Give we'll it up to a wind one, turbine. Yeah. yeah, there you go. We'll place, I, I never thought of that, but that's probably the thinking. If anybody in city council is capable of thought, but anyway, I would think that, or the federal government. So if you're not going to produce one third of the crops, it's, that frees up one third of the fields, right? For uh, for windmills, and solar panels, for that matter. Okay. Any um, if we've got any response on on any of this? Oh, and we do. Don't forget, folks. You know what? I would dearly, dearly love to hear from some women. I would like, particularly any women that that still support the liberals. What do you think of the fact that? Let's forget men. Let's let's talk about women. That women in the maritime provinces, and about half of Quebec, have to buy oil, a good chunk of it, from Saudi Arabia. So some of the money, when they, you know, when you when you tank up your car, some of that money is going to the sheiks of Saudi Arabia, who, as I say, will not allow a woman to leave her own home unless accompanied by a male. And by the way, do you know what? Just to indicate to you the hypocrisy, the male can be a two-year-old son. A woman cannot leave her home unattended unless she is accompanied by a male, which, as I say, can be a little boy. That's that they are. If, if a Saudi woman shows too much ankle, she will be taken. There are police going around. She will be whipped. A woman, young mother. A young mother of two little daughters has been sent to jail in Saudi Arabia for 34 years. Her crime, she twittered support for women's rights. And you women in the eastern part of Quebec and the Atlantic provinces, some of the money that you pay for gasoline goes to support those sheiks. Thanks to Justin Trudeau. John, turn it over to you and our listeners. All right. So uh, you want to go with some of the locations that people have suggested for sure. mines and for, uh, okay. Um, my favorite one is Rideau Cottage and suggests right there at Rideau Cottage. Yep. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, supplant the, uh, the the skating rink. Where they don't need the skating <laughs> rink in the summer. There, Go I ahead. was thinking. I was thinking. Boy, the canal would look lovely, wouldn't it? All lined, lined. with little solar panels up and down. Oh sure. no, you'd put the wind wind the turbines right in the middle, uh, right in the middle of the canal. That's uh, that, that, and you know, um, I, I was thinking, the Carp Mountain is a very famous mountain of garbage. Ah! <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Instead of, you know, a lot of these big hills, Mount Royal in Montreal, right? the big mountain uh, over in Brazil. Driving through the, well, the aforementioned, in, you know, East Coast provinces. They're all yeah. up on hills. You see them. They're, yeah, they're, well, they instead, of having a, instead of having a cross up there, oh. as, as they have on top of Mount Royal, uh, we, could, we could have wind turbines. And, you know, the other thing, too, you know, I, I think wind turbines have a bad reputation. It seems to me that we could really dress these things up. Um, well, I don't understand why we don't paint them with sparkles. <laughs> so, No, seriously. Or rain, rain, rainbow colors are in vogue these days. I think some of some of these could be pride turbines. Pride turbines, okay. Uh -huh. Pride turbines. Uh, paint painted different colors. Um, and not only that, but you know, um, neon lights. I it would seem to me now. It's, it, it, obviously, hey, that's um, fun. The lights, the lights could be powered by solar panels. Okay, so you have solar lights all over these windmills. So when they're when they're spinning and womp womp womp, yeah, they're they're also flashing. They could flash. Be, they could flash to the beat of the womp womp womp. Absolutely. Have have I? I hadn't thought of that, but that's you're a very genius, Low Green. Holy very good. Very good. Cat. Have 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 the the, the the beat. In other words, as of the whomp, you could have the flashing and and. Beat. Do you know how popular that will be with some people in Gatineau? They do that to their cars, <laughs> so they'll love that on their wind turbines. <clears throat> the only thing is, don't forget, Quebec's too smart. They're not doing this. This is only Ottawa. Okay, please remember, seven hundred and ten turbines, not on the Belle Province, Mozi. Oh no, only in Ontario. Uh, you go ahead, John. What else have we got here? <laughs> uh, now I'm thinking, you know, the baseball diamond just kind of sits there empty all the time, doesn't it? Put a couple there. Uh, the Ottawa River behind Parliament Hill. Perfect spot for turbines is Coraline Parliament Hill. City Hall suggests Mark on the properties of each Ottawa councillor, says Kathy. There you go. Uh, put the turbines on top of the towers on Parliament Hill. Better not touch the centennial flame, says Mike. Uh, put windmills in Watson's backyard, suggests Donald. Canadian Tire Place, says Peter. Great idea. Rockcliffe Heights should be the first ones to accept the wind turbines on their property. Uh, Le Breton Flats, right by the water. Parliament Hill is another suggestion from oh, Kelly. I, actually, I, that's, a, that's an excellent. I mean, for something like 60 years, they haven't known what to do with Le Breton Flats except grow weeds. <laughs> Here you go. And... Um, Oh, can you just imagine the number of wind turbines that you could? And you're right. Um, wind turbines along the middle of the uh, Ottawa River. Uh, you know, there's this is the big thing now. Wind turbines out in the uh, buried in the water. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. But we, I really, I really like the idea though, John, of the sparkles and the oh. neon lights on them. Let, let's 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 give wind turbines a better reputation here. Glitter okay. turbines only yep. in Ottawa. It would be a tourist destination. I like this suggestion from Lawrence from Terry watching on Twitch. Every light rail station and I'm thinking just, you know, the wind that is propelled off of those would be enough to actually make that damn train move. No, actually I I hadn't thought of that. Um in in Germany, um they have there are a lot of canals. And a number of the canals, you know, when you, when the water level drops and, and goes up and so forth to let the boats go in and out, you know how a, a lock works, right? Mm -hmm. uh, well, a good a good many of those locks in Germany uh, create electricity. So, in other words, when the water drops, uh, it it turns a turbine. And and uh, so what I'm thinking is, if they can do that with water for a lock, why don't we put small wind turbines on top of the light rail? So when it's whipping along at, what does it do, 140 kilometers an hour or whatever it does? Because it sits still, Lowell. You can't do that on something that sits still half the time. Well, when it does go, uh, it, it seems to me that we could put windmills. In, and you know what? When it goes, if it goes, it seems to me that the power produced would, would be sufficient power to power the light rail. Uh, go ahead, John. What else we've, have we got? We've here? got a phone call. I haven't had a chance to hop on and screen it, but what the heck? Go to it. You're on live with Lowell Green. Can we get your name, please? 
Yeah, hi, it's uh, Paul calling from Canada. Paul from Hello, Canada, Paul. welcome back. Go ahead. Hi, hi, Will. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm I'm calling in uh, just uh, on the regarding the electric power in Ontario, specifically in Ontario. Yeah, and uh, actually, by the way, you know, in in California, they disguise uh, uh, cellular phone towers as palm trees. Oh. So uh, <laughs> it, it, your your idea, you're along thinking along the right lines there, but. Uh, uh, the one thing uh, I I feel that there's no discussion about uh, like surely there's a plan how we're going to provide all this electricity to specifically Ontario. Uh, and, windmills. Uh, uh, the plan is there: 710 <laughs> windmills in Ottawa alone, 36 square kilometers of solar panels. Uh, okay. Well, maybe yeah. So maybe there's a that that 15 percent we've seen on a sunny, windy day, right? But uh, uh, the, uh, uh, for example, we're decommissioning Pickering plant, nuclear power plant in 2025. Right. And uh, I just feel that, uh, like, we're going to hit a wall where we're going to say we need more nuclear power plants. They've talked about these modular plants that can be put anywhere. And I'm kind of wondering, am I the only guy who's a bit nervous about more nuclear power plants? Like, I grew up, you know, at a time with the... Uh, threat of a nuclear war there was three mile island then there's chernobyl and uh i don't know is nobody else concerned about this or what i, I like surely at least we need a very public uh discussion and and transparency about well, exactly I'm, uh, where they're going right yeah you're you're worried about about the nuclear power itself i am too by the way paul yeah the security of it and uh you know they it just takes one mess up to have horrendous consequences right so I, I, you know, surely we're going to be building more of these plants, and they've talked about these modular ones that can go anywhere. And you know, there's that saying, anything that can go wrong. Will can go I wrong. can I just respond, Paul? There's a risk to everything. Yeah, yeah, sure. There's 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 a yeah. there's a risk to to oil. I mean, 46 people died in Lake Magadic when oil and aboard a train caught fire, etc. Um, we yeah. we've yeah. we've had oil spills in the ocean, which have destroyed. Large set. So there's a risk to everything. There's a risk to life. There's a risk every time I get up in the morning, I risk falling and and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, we get out on the Queensway. So there's a risk to everything. The fact of the matter is that despite situations like Chernobyl, um, which is a long time ago, modern technology appears to advance to a point where of all the means of power. Nuclear appears to be the safest, and of course, is totally emission free. Um, that's that's my take on it. There have been no, okay, yeah, yeah. you know, the, the 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 safety record for nuclear power is is pretty good when you think of all the nuclear plants operating, including in some third world countries. Um, so I, I'm not really worried about that. I, what I am more worried about is sure. where are we going to get all the power? You mentioned California. I don't know if you're aware or not, but people in California are now being asked not to plug in their automobiles because they're running out of power. There isn't enough power coming in from the windmills and everything. And California yeah. very often has blackouts and brownouts. And now people are being told, don't plug in your electric cars. Here in Ontario, we're being told, buy an electric car or we'll sue you. So it's 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 a kind of madness. You know, you know what's happened, Paul? You sound like a very intelligent, sane guy. Uh, the, this whole in, the whole environmental movement has taken on a religious fervor. It doesn't matter what the facts are. It doesn't matter what the arguments. If you believe, that's it. Nothing is going to dissuade you, and you will do anything, as Trudeau is doing, to bring it forward. And uh, the, the results, and we're seeing it in Europe now, are disastrous. Paul, thank you for your call, sir. You're a thoughtful man. I appreciate sure. it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I, I gotta, I've, I've got to get my word in here from my good buddies. I, I keep mentioning the fact that Shields up there in Pakenham, good old Pakenham, been with me since day one. And I've also mentioned the fact that it's very difficult for a guy like me, I call myself a raging conservative, to get anybody to sponsor because you can be very sure that uh, people will phone and threaten to boycott, et cetera, et cetera, sp spread stories. It, it, it's happened before and it'll happen again. So as a consequence, we've got one faithful sponsor, Shields. And one of the reasons I must say is that, you know what? It works. <laughs> Shields, they're not stupid at Shields, you know. So the, 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 the ads where people are paying attention 
and they are at least giving them a try. And many people are very, very pleased with the service and with the uh, the products that, that they get. It's it's 90% of everything you need in appliances are right there in stock. Prices, very reasonable, very competitive. Finance plan, yes. And they are now a Sony registered dealer. Shields, give them a chance, folks. John, back to you. One of my favorite comments is somebody had to step into the shower. Uh, they were dripping from all the sarcasm. They're really enjoying the show. Uh, and Robert in BC, uh, I, I, I was giving him some tech support on the phone just a few minutes ago. He was trying to figure out how to watch the show online. So uh, facebook.com slash blast the radio or the Lowell Green or Milkman Show. And, of course, we're on Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter as well. All of your show links, by the way, are right there at blasttheradio.com or lowellgreen.com. Uh, let me see. Let's go to this whole thing is preposterous, says Kellyanne. Woodenhead, there was a story about a dr- about drug paraphernalia found at the Pickering Nuke plant a few years back. Do we have the competency of people to avoid a devastating disaster? Yes, we do. There hasn't been a devastating disaster. Not to Paul, here. To Paul's call, what scares me is, is you know all the waste that comes from producing nuclear power, and we got to store that somewhere. What what becomes of that over time? Uh, it's buried deep down, is it? As okay, I say, that's still scares risk. the heck yeah. out of me that it's down there because something bad can happen to it. Well, we've we've had nuclear power for pretty well, what, 80 years now? Nothing like this has happened. I mean, as I say, there's a risk involved with everything. But this is the cleanest power that we've got. And I'm going to tell you right now, like it or lump it, if we didn't have nuclear power in Ontario, we wouldn't have a province. I mean, it, it provides more than yeah. half. Of all the power right now. And there are no emissions. This is the nice thing about nuclear power. The no emissions from it. No, just a big pile of radioactive waste you got to shove in the ground. Well, you know what? Can I tell you something? When the windmills are gone, you got to shove a lot of waste in the ground too. (laughs) Fair enough. All right, to Blair on Facebook. Why isn't Ontario buying electricity from Quebec? Cornwall, Ontario is. This makes no sense. It's all politics, he says. Well, and, and I've covered this story many times. I've, I've broadcast this many times. <clears throat> An official uh, with Hydro-Quebec came to me a number of years ago. He was approaching the, uh, the liberal government at the time, Kathleen Wynne, getting nowhere. He said, Lowell, we are prepared in Quebec and we have the power to supply almost all of eastern Ontario with power at about half the price you're paying now. I went on the air with this. I approached uh, Bob Shirelli, who was energy minister at the time. They had no interest. They were they were a dead set. They, the religious fervor had set in. Nope, they weren't going to buy power from Quebec at half price. They were going to install windmills and solar panels at about twenty times the price. That's a that's a true fact, folks. Honest to God. Go ahead, please. Let's go to email. The address is Lowell at BlastTheRadio.com. Our buddy Robin Carlton Place chimes in to say this. Lowell, we have been told that increased hurricanes are caused by climate change. This year, there has not been a single hurricane big enough to even give it a name. Yet the CBC ran a story from a so-called expert that claimed the lack of hurricanes is actually caused by, you guessed it, climate change. Yeah, How actually, do you argue with this nonsense, he asks? Yeah, it's... Uh... They, they, one, one, here's one of the problems. It appears that there are more hurricanes and more damage. One of the main reasons, well, there are two reasons. Number one, weather channels. I mean, they, they, they die for hurricanes. This, is, this, this puts money in their pocket. We didn't have weather channels a few years ago. And number two, more and more people are moving into coastal areas affected by hurricanes more and more people are moving south affected by hurricanes and uh, as as more people move in etc then the damage estimates become higher uh, but as far as the number if you look if if you really do your research you will see that in fact there are no on average no more hurricanes these days than there were in fact one of the worst periods for hurricanes was back in the 30s and 40s go ahead john uh, James, in moments ago, to say to me, John, the tech is so far advanced now, some nuclear plants can run on the nuclear waste, getting rid of that problem. Okay, that's neat. I haven't heard that. Cool. Climate change, COVID, and supply chain is the new terms in use today, says Ray. Let's go to some of the earlier comments. First off, uh, Meg. Welcome, Meg. She is watching from Kenya. Welcome to the show in Kenya. That's a first, I think. David says $1.27.9 Costco gasoline in Edmonton. So, yeah, so $1.27.9 in Edmonton, and we'll be over 2 bucks in New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, PEI, and Newfoundland if they get this bloody tax in uh maybe the people in the maritime says Coraline will smarten the hell up and stop voting liberal 
People are going to have to lobby every NDP member to get them to defeat this crooked bunch of liberal bastards right now. Laurentian Terry on Twitch. $13 billion in transfer payments to Quebec, adds Coraline. Billions of dollars in surplus every single year. Let me point out that Trudeau signed is either a six or a seven year deal guarant excuse me, guaranteeing Quebec at least nine billion dollars a year for the next six years. Beautiful. And a big chunk of it coming from Alberta, which Quebec refuses to buy oil from. John, we're right out of time here. Yes, Thank sir. you I all, will, folks. Will Thank forward you all. all the leftover comments to you, Lowell. You got a lot of reading to do tonight, sir. Don't forget, sparkles for wind turbines. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for calling. We'll be back. The Lowell Green Show is seen and heard live around the world at 2 p.m. Eastern. Connect with us online at blasttheradio.com slash Lowell Green. Can't join us live? Download the Lowell Green podcast. Available on Apple, Spotify, Google, and more. Ask your smart speaker to play the Lowell Green podcast. This is a production of blasttheradio.com.